Let us pray. Our Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the Bible study. We pray that as we approach your word now, you will open our understanding so we will see what you have written and preserved for every one of us in your word in Jesus' name. Bless us all together, O oh Lord. Enlighten us. Encourage us. Lift our hearts up towards you even today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Today we're studying Psalm 34. This psalm has been properly called or titled A Song of Deliverance. Deliverance from fear. Deliverance from danger. Deliverance from trouble. Deliverance from affliction. The gratitude of the psalmist prompted him to thankfully record the goodness of the Lord towards him. And he sang of the grand fact of his being heard in the hour of peril or the hour of trouble. I've divided the psalm to four parts. Point one, the song of praise, verses one to six. Two, sufficiency of provision, verses seven to ten. Three, sermon for practice, verses eleven to fourteen. Four, the source of protection, verses 15 to 22. Let's begin with the first part of the psalm. Reading from verses 1 through to 6, the song of praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My mouth shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. You will see from the title that this is a psalm of David. And it was written at a particular time. He got into trouble and he didn't know what will become of him. And he had to act in a crafty, clever manner. He had to change his behavior or his conduct before Abimelech, who took him to be a mad man at such a time because of the way that he presented himself at a time of difficulty. And Abimelech had to drive him away. And then he departed. But when he came out of that situation, he realized something. He knew it wasn't his craftiness. It wasn't his funny, strange behavior that got him out of trouble. In fact, he knew if the Lord were to leave him to his cleverness, so that he will get deliverance on his own side. He will never have been delivered at all. And once again, as it was customary of David, he raised up his heart unto the Lord. And he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. We need to speak about David a little. David was an individual that knew exaltation or the praise of the people very early in life. If you remember the life of David as a teenager, he won national victory. Victory over Goliath. And that made the women of the nation to sing his praises. He knew exaltation. But then also he knew humiliation. He knew what it meant to be exalted and what it meant to be humiliated. And then David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. It may be in the day of praise. Or in the night of blame, I will praise the Lord. It may be when all the attention of the Israelites are focused on me, and they praise me, and they love me, and they honor me. Or it may be when everybody is turned against me, and he said, 
I will bless the Lord at all times. He knew what it meant to have plenty. He knew what it meant to also have poverty. He knew what it meant to enjoy the presence in the palace. Yet he knew what it meant to be driven away, chased by King Saul, being driven all about. And he said, it doesn't matter. When I have the favor of the people, I will bless the Lord. When I have the frown of the people, I will bless the Lord. He knew what it meant for him to be able to enjoy many friends. As people honored him, loved him, embraced him, he also knew what it meant to have many foes. And yet he said, in the midst of friend or foe, in a time when all people surround me, or in the time when all people reject me, I will bless the Lord at all times. And then he said, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In the morning, I'll praise him. At noon, I'll praise him. In the evening, I'll praise him. In the day of hope and joy, I'll praise him. In the night of affliction and adversity, I will praise him. This is one of the secrets of the life of David. Because of his commitment to praise the Lord at all times. Because he knew whatever was happening. That God was worthy of praise, of adoration, and of worship in verse 2. My soul shall make her boast. If you stop there, it will be something bad. Because you see, the Lord does not want our boasting in our own strength, in our own ability. But he didn't stop there. He said, my heart will make her boast in the Lord. He was a great warrior. He said, I'm not going to boast in my strength. He was a great king. I'm not going to boast in my royalty. He was a prospered man. I'm not going to boast in my prosperity. He was a favored man. I'm not going to boast in my privileges. He was a singled out man among all the children of his parents. And he said, I'm not going to boast on the honor conferred upon me. I boast only in one thing. Not in money, not in strength, not in my ability for warfare. And it is not in my position in royalty. I boast in the Lord. You know, that's a good kind of boasting. When you rejoice in the Lord, when you boast in the Lord, when you say like Paul the Apostle, I can do all things. If you stop there, that will be bad. That will mean you are exalting yourself. But when you say, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, I make my boast in the Lord. And then he said, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And then in verse 3, he called everybody. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. He said, are you exalted? I have been exalted to you. Join me. Let's exalt his name together. Are you favored, fortunate in life? I have been favored, well favored, fortunate in life to you. I have been appointed king. I have been anointed king. Join me. Let us praise the Lord together. Have you had sufficient in life? I too have had sufficient in life. I've lived in plenty and prosperity, he said. Join me. Let us praise the Lord together. Have you got a great title? A great position? A great position in a whole nation where you are exalted when all attention, all eyes are focused on you. He said, I was there too. I had that privilege too. Yet we can praise the Lord. Join with me. Let us praise the Lord. Then he turned around and said, Are you going to trouble? Oh, he said, You will never believe the deep waters that almost swallowed me up. But I'm still praising the Lord. And he said, If you have had trouble like I've had trouble, join me. Let us exalt his name together. You have family trouble? Oh, he said, I can tell you stories. My own child turned his heart and his mind and the hand of the people against me. Even if you have family trouble, let us come together. Praise the Lord with me. He said, do you have your wife turning her back on you? 
even calling you names and making trouble with you and nagging you and the home is hot he said if i told you what my wife said to my face you'll be surprised he said but forget it don't think about it oh magnify the lord with me let us exalt his name together he said do you have enemies oh he said i could tell you even the king of the whole nation saul he was my enemy he chased me everywhere he drove me everywhere i could not even live in the city i was here and there today and tomorrow but he said never mind oh magnify the lord with me let us exalt his name together you know what he's saying is saying whatever you are going through days of pleasure or night of pain days of prosperity or the night of poverty the days of adoration or the days of the praise of the people or the night of affliction problems with people everywhere it says never mind whether it is up or down on a mountain top or in a valley magnify the lord with me let us exalt his name together and then in verse 4 he said i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears he said i am a king but i pray he said i'm a warrior but i pray he said i've had many mighty men around me supporting me but i pray he said i am intelligent and clever but i pray he said i have all things going for me but i pray he said and i have trouble too and i pray and i have difficulty and i pray he said i sought the lord he was great but he prayed he had a crown on the head but he prayed he had a special position in society but he prayed he had wealth but he prayed he had ability and experience but he prayed that was a secret of his success you see whatever we have in life there is a place that money will not be able to accompany you you get to a crossroad and money does not have an answer a solution for the problem you have there is a place you get in life that cleverness or wisdom or whatever it is will not be able to help the only thing that will help at such a time is prayer he prayed i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears they looked unto him and were lightened their faces were not ashamed verse 6 this poor man cried do you remember who is writing this psalm it's david and for a person who has been from his teenage years very very young in life that he defeated goliath for him to say this poor man cry that's the humility you know that even at an early age he was honored and anointed as king above all his elder brothers and yet in the midst of it all with the anointing oil upon him with the eyes of the nation upon him with the privilege and the favor that he enjoyed with the security that he enjoyed from above from the lord and also the very fact that he had been anointed he was waiting to get on the throne and he was going to reign as king and you know he had many talents musical talent and talent of poetry you know just write all these poems and yet he said this poor man cried what a humble state of mind he said this poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles he said i've been delivered not because i'm clever not because i'm great not because i'm royal not because i'm wealthy but because of the power and the promise of the lord for me fulfilled for me he saved me out of all my trouble we should have the same gratitude the same praise of the lord should be in our mouth in psalm 107 verse 32 let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders here we are counseled and commanded that we need to praise the lord honor the lord adore him worship him in the congregation of the people of god isaiah chapter 12 from verse 1 
And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. I don't know whether you've known that the Bible says, The Lord is angry with the wicked every day. Because your sins turned you against God. You became an enemy of God. Yet in the midst of the anger he remembered mercy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And while we were yet enemies, Christ died for the ungodly. And as to receive the invitation, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You came. You believed on the Lord. Then he turned judgment away from you. He saved you. His anger was turned away from you. And now he comforts you. He speaks comfortingly unto you. And he says, you are my child. I have redeemed you. That's the reason you need to praise the Lord. I will praise thee. Because even though you are angry with me, because I was a sinner, you have turned your anger away. You have redeemed me. The people who have been born again, who have been redeemed by the hand of the Lord, we shall praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. It says, I will exalt thee. It says, I will praise thy name. Why? It said, because you have done wonderful things. When the Lord takes a soul from the merry clay, that's a wonderful thing. When your sins are blotted out, that's a wonderful thing. When you are saved from the power of sin, from the pollutions of sin, from the penalty of sin, that's a wonderful thing. When your name is written in the book of life and you can say, I am born again. I'm a child of God. The love of God has been manifested on my soul. That's a wonderful thing. It says, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name for thou hast done wonderful things. When you are sanctified, when the Adamic nature is taken away, when the hedge of the, when the root of sin is dealt with in your heart and you are circumcised and you are purified and you are made holy and the mind of Christ is given unto you and it gives you overflowing love. It fills your heart with love. Love for God. Love for the people of God. Even love for your enemies. When they smite you on the one cheek, God gives you the grace, the divine ability, the love within you to turn the other cheek unto them. God gives you the grace to bless the people that curse you and to do good to the people that use you despitefully. What wonderful thing that is, that you are given the grace of God, the gift of righteousness, and God gives you another heart. You become a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are become new. And then he puts within your heart an overflowing love. Overflowing love. Love towards everybody. Don't you know that's wonderful? I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. When God decides that after you have been sanctified, he will send the third person of the Trinity. That is the Holy Ghost. The power of God. And he sends that power to come within you. And now the Holy Ghost. The power of God dwells within you. And everywhere you go, the comforter, the teacher, the guide, the one that reminds you of Christ and glorifies Christ in you, is living in you. That's a wonderful thing. I will praise thy name. I will exalt thee, for thou hast done wonderful things. When your sicknesses are taken away, and he confirms his word, when he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Think about all the healings that God has been doing for us in our church. The lepers have been cleansed. And those who are blind have been about their sight restored. The Lord has healed people that have issue of blood. Those who have been barren, God gave them children. A lot of things that God did. I will praise thy name. I will exalt thee. For thou hast done wonderful things. Think about the people that had demonic spirits oppressing them, torturing them. And possessing them as they came in fulfillment of the word of Jesus. 
that these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. And those devils who are cast out, now you are free. You are free from witches and wizards. You are free from the oppression of familiar spirits. You are free from all the torture, of all the torment, of all the powers of darkness. That's the reason we need to praise the Lord. Look at Luke, Luke chapter 19. And in verse 37. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. All the mighty works that, that they had seen. What's mightier than being born again? A God has been mighty to save. What's mightier than God walking on your heart and making you holy? Living in holiness and righteousness before God all the days of your life. What can be mightier than the Holy Ghost coming upon you? Coming within you? Feeling you? Saturating you? What can be mightier than when the Holy Ghost comes in? He comes in with so supernatural energy that it changes your language. You begin to speak with another tongue. And it says the people, they glorified God. They praised the Lord. For all the mighty works that they had seen. Look at your life. If you are born, if you are born again, you will see the mighty work of God. And I believe you will see more. I believe God will do more. Let us praise him for what he has done already. And then he will be ready to do more in our lives. Let's go back to Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verses 7 to 10. Sufficiency of provision. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want, there is no lack to them that fear him. The young lions do lack, and they suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not lack, shall not want any good thing. Think about these verses one by one. And you will see the sufficiency of the provision of the Lord. Look at verse 7. It says, do you need protection? It says that has been provided. Look at verse 8. It says, do you need delight, joy, you want your life to taste good? It says, that has been provided. Look at verse 9. Do you have any want, any lack, any need in your life? It says, that has been provided to you. Look at verse 10. Hunger? You need shelter? Is there any good thing your heart is thinking about that God will do for you now? God will do for you in the future? God will do for you while you are a bachelor. Is there anything God, you are thinking about? A good thing God will do for you while you are still a spinster. Is there anything you are thinking about? God will do for you a good thing after you are married. Now that you are young or when you become old. Any good thing you are thinking about. It says whatever your heart, your mind can think about. Whatever you can imagine. Any good thing you can mention. God says... I provided it for you. That's why we call it sufficiency of provision. Look at it again from verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Many times we do not know how God has provided protection, security for the people of God. But we are told he has made all the provision. One day, Elisha and his servant they lived in a house that was totally surrounded by their enemies. They wanted to swallow them up. They wanted to just gang up on them and arrest Elisha and take him to a place that nobody will know where they are taking him and just crush him, destroy him. But while they were sleeping, God knew about the plan of the Assyrians. And then God had made enough provision, adequate provision, the servant of the man woke up in the morning and he saw the enemies surrounding them. He cried out, Alas, my master, what shall we do? 
There is nothing to do. Heaven has done everything that needs to be done. Do you know heaven is protecting you? Do you know the angels of God are around you? The Bible assures us there is a hedge of protection around you. That's what the devil complained about. When God said, have you seen my servant Job? That there is none like him. And the devil said, oh yes, but you have made an hedge around him. My brother, my sister, there is a hedge around you. By the blood of Jesus, there is an umbrella, the protection of God over your head. No evil will come upon you. And in Psalm 125, look at this. Psalm 125, verse 2. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. It's not only for David, it's also for you. And it's not only for Elisha and his servant, it's also for you. The hedge was not only around Job, the hedge of the protection of the Lord is also around you. From henceforth, even forever. Let's turn back to Psalm 34, verse 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Wait a moment. You will never know how good the food is until you taste it. You'll, you will never know how nice that thing is until you experience it. Some people say, they say the Lord is good, but I don't know. Come and taste. How do you taste? By being born again. Because it is when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you have an encounter with the Lord. You have an experience with the Lord. You come to taste of the work of Calvary. You come to taste of the love demonstrated through Jesus Christ. You come to taste of the grace of God. You come to taste of the gift of righteousness. You come to taste of the provisions of heaven. Because it is Jesus Christ that links us up with the Father. But my friend, if you are outside the kingdom, you will only be hearing about it. You'll only be talking about it. It will be happening in the lives of other people. But come near. Why are you outside? Why are you drawing back? Look at what Calvary has provided for every one of us. The salvation of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord. Come and taste. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. The spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say come, and let him that is a thirst come, and take of the water of life freely. Why are you outside? Behold, all things are ready. You want peace of mind? Why don't you come? You want the love of God to overflow in your heart? Why don't you come? You feel dry? You feel forsaken? You feel confused. You feel battered in life. You feel so shattered in life that you do not know where you are. Your life will be all right. Calm. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is good. And it will be good to you in Jesus' name. And the way we taste the goodness of the Lord is that we give our lives to the Lord. We say, I want to taste of the love of God, of the mercy of God, of the goodness of the Lord. When you forsake your sin, you turn away from your evil, and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is how to taste the Lord. It is by faith. By faith. The blessed is the man that trusteth in him, that has faith in him. That's how we trust the Lord, by believing in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. If you have not been born again, I'm inviting you today. The Lord is inviting you today. The angels of God are even inviting you. The Spirit of God is inviting you. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that has faith in Christ, that trusteth in Him. You see, when you have that trust in the Lord, something happens immediately. Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2. Reading from verse 5. For I, says the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. In verse 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory as he sent me unto the nations, which spoiled you, for he that toucheth you, toucheth the apple of his eye. 
the moment you give your life to the Lord and you are born again, from that time, any witch, any wizard, any familiar spirit, anybody with demonic power, powers of darkness that tries to touch you, they will touch the apple of the eye of the Lord. You are the apple of the, uh, of the eye of God. And it says, it will be a wall of fire around you. My friend, if you are not born again, that is what you are missing. But come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. He will meet all the needs of your life. Look at this Psalm 34. Verses 9 and 10. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want. There is no lack to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want, shall not lack any good thing. That promise is still for today. See the way the New Testament gives us that promise in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. It says, when we come to the Lord, there is no lack. There is no need. What does that mean? What it means says, the need may be there, but God will supply it. I want you to do something so that you can understand what we are talking about. Think of your life. Think of any need you have now. Personal need. Family need. Temporal need, lifelong need, or need that is spiritual. Think of any need you have now. Can you think of any need you have which God has not supplied? Somehow, some way, for somebody in the past, He gave them manna in the wilderness, He gave them water out of the rock, He protected them in the wilderness full of serpents and scorpions. There were many people that hated the children of Israel. God protected them. He led them through those 40 years. And those of them that trusted in the Lord and they were obedient, He saw them through until they entered the land of Canaan. Are there some Jericho walls before you that is trying to stop your progress? He brought it down before. Is there any river that is cutting you away from the progress and prosperity of your life? He dried up the Red Sea. Or is the day too short for you to have the victory? Is taught the sun for Joshua and the army of the people of God? Is there a champion of the enemies, a Goliath before you? Small David, young David killed Goliath. Do you have enemies around you? Saul was chasing David like an enemy. When it was about time for Saul to catch David, there was trouble enough for Saul and he went back. And in the New Testament, when they had no fish, they caught no fish all the night, Jesus said, throw your net there. He provided for them. He had laid all their fears. In the stormy sea, he said, peace be still. And there was no danger anymore. When people were sick, he healed them. When there was any demon possession or oppression, and the father of the child said, he began to cry. He said, if you can do anything, help us. And Jesus said, if you can only believe, if you believe all things are possible to him that believeth, the man began to cry. He said, Lord, I believe. Help that mine unbelief. He helped him. He will help you. What need do you think you have? There is no need that is beyond the power of God. The one you are worshipping, the Almighty God, is the one that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in you. That power will work in your life. There is no need, there is no lack for anyone that trusts in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let's keep on trusting in the Lord. The night will turn to day. The valley will turn to plain ground. The enemies will turn to friends. And all the problems, everything we believe, by faith in Christ, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Don't get discouraged. Somebody else has walked through that valley you are walking now. Don't get discouraged. Somebody else has faced that same enemy you are facing now. Don't get discouraged. Somebody else has suffered hunger and nakedness like you are suffering now. They didn't die in it. You will not die in it. The Lord delivered them. The Lord will deliver you. In Philippians chapter 4, 
Verse 19. But my God, you see your God. I said, you see your God. Why then are you afraid? Why are you sorrowful? Why are you mourning? Why are you not cheerful? Don't you have a mighty God in heaven? A mighty deliverer? A mighty savior? A mighty provider? But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The only thing is that all the blessings come through Jesus Christ. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, all your blessings will be supplied. Let's come back to Psalm 34. Point 3. Sermon for practice. Point 3. Sermon for practice. From verse 11. Psalm 34. Come ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life, and loveth many days, that he may see good, keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile, depart from evil, and do good, seek peace, and pursue each. Now, he brings instruction and teaching. And he invites us that we shall come with willingness to learn, with humility and teachableness of spirit. He says, come, hacking or listen. And I will teach you the fear of the Lord. He said, anyone there that wants life, a good life, a happy life, a prosperous life, a satisfactory life, and you love many days, and you want your life to be prolonged, that you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, he said, if that is your desire, I have some admonition for you, some exhortation for you, a message, a sermon for you. And it's in verse 13, keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips that they speak no guile, no deceit. That's the message for the people that want to see good days, the people that want to enjoy the promises of God in their lives. You see, many people, they talk too much. They talk too much. And you see, brothers and sisters, when we talk too much, we increase our trouble. As you think about it, and you look over your life, you will see that, were it not for our talking too much, we will not have suffered as much as we have suffered. Let me remind you of a woman, Miriam. She wouldn't have known the death, the shame, the pain of leprosy. But she talked too much. Let me remind you of something. She wouldn't have known the pain of losing the power of God. She talked too, he talked too much. Do you remember Judas Iscariot? He went to talk to the Pharisees, to the people that were wanting to take Jesus. He betrayed the Lord. His tongue got him into trouble. Do you remember Peter? We read about him in our scripture reading today. He talked too much. He was self-confident. He boasted too much. Instead of praying, he was talking and talking and talking. And eventually, when he was confronted, he forgot all the promises of the Lord. And he talked again and he said something that got him into trouble. Something that he later wept about. Let us moderate what we say. Instead of murmuring, we can pray. Instead of grumbling, we can pray. Instead of complaining, we can pray. Instead of talking to the other fellow who has hurt us, we can keep quiet about it and we can pray. If we can pray and talk less, our troubles will be less. And whatever little trouble remains, God will take care of the rest. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 10. Verse 19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Brothers and sisters, let us talk less and let us pray more. And then in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. May the Lord deliver us from that. And in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from troubles. 
brothers and sisters, we have enough trouble coming from the devil. Don't let us increase it by the way we use our tongue. We have enough trouble coming from our persecutors, the people that don't like our Christian style. Don't let us increase our troubles by the use of our tongue. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from trouble. May God give us wisdom to pray more and to talk less. So that the Lord will deliver us from all troubles in Jesus' name. In Proverbs in uh, Psalm 34, I'm reading now from verse 15 to verse 22. The source of protection. The source of our protection. From verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are, upon, are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. The Lord will deliver us. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. None of them that trust in him shall be desolate. If you notice from verse 15, you see something beautiful here. Verse 15, the eyes of the Lord. In that same verse 15, the ears of the Lord. In verse 16, the face of the Lord. And then in verse 18, the Lord is near the presence of the Lord. And in that same verse 18, he saveth such as be of a contrite spirit, the power of the Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Do you know if you are a believer, if you put your trust in the Lord, the face of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord, the ears of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the power of the Lord, they all combine together to protect you. And nothing will hurt you. And nothing will harm you. It says in verse 17, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth. He sees your crying. He knows about your tears. Oh, you say, I've been crying. I've been weeping. I've been mourning. I have trouble. God, are you there? He's very near. He's nearer than you think. He's on your side. And he will defend you. And he will protect you. Don't go away from the Lord and think, He doesn't know my trouble. He doesn't know all my pains. He doesn't know what I'm going through. He knows and is very near. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them uh, for him from them all. At the end of each, no trouble, no affliction will remain. He will deliver you from everything. In Psalm 121, from verse 1, Psalm 121 from verse 1, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. My help cometh from the Lord. I want you to say, my help cometh. Say it again. I believe your help will come. It will not delay. The Lord knows what you are going through. And he has help. He has the solution to the problem. He will help you. Don't turn away from the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Pray more. Lean upon the Lord and say, I will not let him go. I know my help in his, is in his hand and he will help me. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day. Nor the moon by night, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forever. 
I rejoice with you tonight. From tonight, from today, even forever, the Lord will be on your right hand and on your left hand. He'll be in front of you. He'll be behind you. He will be supporting you from beneath and he will be overing over you from above. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Anytime you have any problem, call upon the name of the Lord and your help will come. Even from tonight, your help is coming. I said your help is coming. You stand up and tell the Lord, I know my help is coming. My help cometh from the Lord. Help is coming. Provision is coming. The protection is available. All you need from the hand of the Lord, you will not lack any good thing. You will not lack any good thing. My help is coming. My help cometh from the Lord. My help cometh from the Lord. Believer, take heart. Be courageous. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. Any problem, call upon the Lord. Any trouble, call upon the Lord. Any difficulty, call upon the Lord. Are you sick? Call upon the Lord. Are you undergoing difficult time? Call upon the Lord. Are you in the valley of the shadow of death? Call upon the Lord. My help cometh. My help cometh. Help is coming. Help is coming. Help is coming. The Lord loves you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's thinking about you. He's planning for you.